So let me start with this. So again, I told you that the master slave replication was something which used to happen earlier, and it gave to something it gave way to something called replica sets. So the master slave replication is the oldest mode of replication that MongoDB supports. In the earlier versions of MongoDB, the master slave replication was used for failover, backup, and the read scaling. In the newer versions, it is replaced by replica sets for the most number of use cases. Here you can see there is a master and there are slaves attached to that. So replica sets are recommended for new production deployments to replicate data in a faster rather than a master slave architecture. So again, how does a replica set in MongoDB works? So a replica set consists of a group of MongoD instances that we just saw that holds the same data set. That again, we have saw the replica set functions as follows. The primary MongoD receives all the right operations and the secondary MongoD replicates the operations from the primary. This is something that Sandeep would have seen in a live working on his replica set. The primary node receives the right operations from the clients. The primary logs any changes or updates to its data sets in its op log. The secondaries replicate the op log of the primary and apply all the operations to their data sets. So replica set in MongoDB. An extra MongoD instance can be added to a replica set to act as an arbiter. So what is an arbiter node? So this is specifically added to the replica set so that you know the total number of uh, instances we can have uh, can be odd so that if in case the primary goes down, we can have a majority if an election takes place. So following are some of the characteristics of an arbiter. So arbiters do not maintain a data set. Arbiter is the node which just participate in an election to select the primary node. So the only purpose of it is to take part in the election. It doesn't even store the data. So again, arbiters do not require a dedicated hardware. Again, it can just work as a command prompt, you know, as we have done in our systems. Secondary members in a replica set asynchronously apply operations from the primary. Important point to be noted over here is asynchronously. It's a lazy write. These replica sets can function without some secondary members. As a result, all secondary members may not return the updated data to the clients. So again, when I told Sandeep that, you know, you make a write to the primary or an update to the primary and see the data back in the secondary. So you guys would have seen again that, you know, you are not able to see the data over there in the secondary. It will come after some time because, again, it's a lazy write to the secondary. So a primary can convert to a secondary or vice versa. However, an arbiter remains changed. Automatic failover, so this is something which talks about the replication in detail. And what it talks about is, when the primary node of a replica set stops communicating with other members for more than 10 seconds, another member is selected as the new primary. Selection happens through an election process. The secondary node that gets majority of the votes becomes the primary. A replica set supports application needs in the following ways. Again, deploying a replica set in multiple data centers. Manipulating primary election by adjusting the priority of the members. So that's what, again, uh, when we uh, initiate an instance, I can also, when I specify the config, I specify the config, again, ID the members. Along with that, I can specify the priority as well. That, you know, if the priority of the guy will be more, I can ensure that whether the secondary will be able to become a primary ever or not. Supporting dedicated members for functions such as reporting, disaster recovery, or backup. So again, we can see uh, in the diagram that another you know, primary goes down. What happens is election for a new primary happens. And again, we see that you know, uh, the new primary is elected. One of the secondary becomes the primary, and the other secondary uh, just follows what the primary says. Again, replica set members. A replica set can also have an arbiter. Arbiters do not replicate or store data, but again play a crucial role in selecting a secondary to take the place of a primary when the primary becomes unavailable. A typical replica set contains a primary, secondary, and an arbiter. So again, what we see is we have a primary node, we have a secondary node, and we have an arbiter. And you can see there is a heartbeat going constantly between all the nodes. Again, this heartbeat is on similar lines, you know, what the heartbeat we see in Hadoop. In Hadoop, we see all the secondaries, that is the data nodes, you know, share a heartbeat with the name node. So again, like this, all the nodes over here in MongoDB as well, share a heartbeat among themselves. A replica set in MongoDB version 3.0 can have maximum 50 members with only seven members capable of voting in the election. 
So again, now we are specifically talking about who are priority zero replica set members. Again, when we set a member a priority of zero, what will happen? That will become a that will be a secondary which can never become a primary. So again, a priority zero member is a secondary member that cannot become the primary. The characteristics of a priority zero are it cannot trigger any election. It can maintain data set copies, accept and perform read operations, and again uh, choose in electing a primary. So again, he can uh, vote an election, though he cannot trigger an election. So by configuring a priority zero member, you can prevent secondaries from becoming the primary in a three member replica set. One data center hosts both the primary and the secondary and a second data center host one priority zero member. So again, you know, I've just kept one copy of the data in some other data center just to ensure if the full data center goes off, I still have some data with me safe in some other data center. A priority zero member acts as a backup and can immediately replace an unavailable member in an application because again it has the data. So always we recommend that you know, we have a priority zero uh, replica set member as well in our replica set. Now we have something called hidden replica set members. Again, hidden members are those which are not you know seen to the client. What again that means? Hidden members of a replica set are invisible to the client applications. The characteristics of a hidden member are they store a copy of the primary data. They are priority zero members. Again, they mean the moment you see priority zero, the main thing which should come to your mind is it's a secondary and it cannot ever become a primary. Their priority zero members can elect a primary but cannot actually become a primary or replace a primary. They are not given appropriate read and write rights. They can be used for dedicated functions like reporting and the backup. So there's something you see there is a primary, there is a secondary, 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 and again there is a secondary guy whose priority is zero. Then there are some, you know, replica sets. Again, an important thing which you know is asked in the interviews quite often. What are delayed replica set members? Again, I can even set some uh, members in a replica set with a delayed. You know, I can specify that you know you copy, you start copying the data from the primary after these particular minutes. So those are called delayed replica set members. So again, delayed replica set members are secondaries that copy data from the primary node's uplock file after a certain interval or delay. Delayed replica set members reflect a previous version or delayed state of the stored data set. It's like, you know, I create a backup of the data after every some T hours. What happens is in case of a failure or something, I can again make the system come back from whatever time it was earlier. So delayed replica set members are secondaries that copy data from the primary node's uplock file after a certain interval delay. Delayed replica set members reflect the previous version or delayed set or state of the stored data set. So again, uh, what I was saying to you guys was uh, very importantly, they are basically used so that you know uh, we can uh, checkpoint you know some data so that if in case of some failure, I can still uh, bring the data back to the system to the place it was earlier. So delayed members perform a role backup or on a historical snapshot of the data set. They help manage various human errors and recover from errors such as unsuccessful application upgrade and drop databases and collections. The characteristics of a delayed member are as follows. It must be a priority zero member. It must be hidden and not be visible to applications. It again must participate in electing a primary. Now again we can see over here what is this. So what we're talking about is you can configure a delayed secondary member with the seconds given below. So again, okay, delayed secondary member, it again has to have a priority value of zero, which again means that it is a secondary which cannot ever become a primary. Hidden value is true, it means it will be hidden. And again, slave delay value means again how much seconds you want the system to wait till it makes a copy of the uplock. To set a one hour delay, you see the operations given below. Again, you can see over here what we are setting is we are setting a configuration. So config is equal to rs.conf. And again, what we give over here is config.members zero dot priority we are giving is zero. Again, members. So again, please see that you know what you see over here, the members. The members you see over here is the array which you had in your configuration. So the first member his priority setting is zero, his hidden and setting is true, his slave delay I'm setting is 3600. And again, after I've made some configuration changes, I can reconfigure.